Well, good morning. I <clears throat> uh, appreciate the media being here and all the guests. Standing behind me are the leadership command staff uh, of the Mobile Police Department. Over the last two months, there's been a process going on, uh, unbeknown to most of our citizens, but that process is uh, selecting a new police chief. It's something that uh, we take with the utmost sincerity, uh, recognizing that public safety is really our number one priority. Uh, we had six candidates. They underwent an evaluation of leadership and a leadership assessment, culminating in like a 140-page profile of each one of them. This is the assessment on three of them, and I have another book just like it. And so not only did we learn a whole lot about them, they learned a whole lot about themselves. And this assessment is used to select leaders all over the country. I mean, so it's not just specific to uh, PD. We have used this uh, same type of assessment in selecting other parts of the leadership team over the last several years uh, and during my administration. As part of the process, we asked each candidate to submit uh, their strategic plan. So we have a strategic plan that's written by each one of them. That strategic plan will first be shared uh, with the police department but once it's been shared in the appropriate way, then it will be made available to the public. Um, I have to almost smile a little bit about how grueling this process was and, and how we actually surprised them with a couple of things to see how they would react. Uh, and I think if you would talk to them, they will tell you that it was a grueling process. And this process that we've been going through uh, was led by uh, Chief Barber, uh, Public Safety Director Lawrence Batiste, Management Consultant Dan Lumpkin, who's over here up to the left, and the outside subject matter expert was Judge Charlie Grattick. Uh, Dan Lumpkin has been involved in selecting, helping corporations, uh, cities, others to help in their selection process of leaders really all over the country, and so Dan we appreciate what you've done to help us with this. This was not an easy decision. Actually, because of the qualifications of these guys, it made it a very difficult decision. But of those six people, there's over 120 years of law enforcement uh, in the city of Mobile. Uh, we have the utmost respect uh, for, from them, and I can tell you that they have the us, utmost respect for each other. And so we're looking forward to how this will gel going forward, but I am convinced that even those that were not selected uh, will make sure that the police department moves forward in support of the new chief. Um, one of the things that we found out was there is a chief in each one of them. Maybe the timing was just not right, but we are very fortunate to have the leadership that we do in Mobile Police Department. But as you know, there can only be one chief and today I'm proud to say that that is uh, Paul Prine, Paul O. Prine, who's been with the police department <clears throat> for over 26 years. Um, Paul grew up in Alabama Village and, and went to school at Biger High School, and there'll be more about his uh, additional uh, experience. But the, from an education standpoint, he has a bachelor's degree in business administration and a graduate degree in criminal justice. I want to go back to growing up in the city of Mobile. You know, there's always concern about does someone really understand the needs of all of our citizens? Do they, can they look at somebody through another set of eyes and see how they view the city? And I'm convinced that Paul has those characteristics, those attributes because of how he grew up and how he's risen uh, in the ranks of leadership in the Mobile Police Department. And he's been command of the Field Operations Division since uh, 2020, and he was served, previously served as the captain of the 3rd Precinct. Uh, having personally interviewed Paul, uh, I am 100% convinced that he's the right person at this time to lead the department. He's got my utmost and unwavering support 
and as I've told the policemen, all policemen, since day one during this administration, they will continue to have the support of the mayor to make sure that they have the tools, the resources, and the training they need to make sure that they can do the job. Before I turn to Paul, I would like to thank Chief Roy Hodge uh, for serving and as an interim director. One of the most difficult jobs is to be head of a police department as an interim chief. Uh, and he's done an outstanding job in that, so thank you, Roy, very much for your service. Yeah. <laughs> so, to my far left is Paul Bryan and his wife Kay. I had just a brief moment to speak with Kay coming, and she said she's very excited about being able to share Roy with us, and Kay, we're also excited about that. So, uh, Paul? I mean, I did say share Paul with us. I didn't say, I think I said Roy. We're glad that you're going to share Paul with us very much. Thank you, Mayor. First, let me uh, thank Mayor Stimson for those kind words. I, I certainly appreciate it. Um, I told him the other day when I spoke with him that regardless of how this turned out, that, uh, and it's my humble opinion, that uh, he has certainly been the best leader this city has had in the last eight years, and we're looking for more accomplishments through his leadership for the next four years. I want to thank uh, Director Petit, certainly Chief Barber, for facilitating the process. I'm not sure if I want to thank Dan. Dan knows more about me than I know about me. Uh, but I do want to tell you this, um, you know, what Mayor Stimson said, I, I, I grew up very diverse. I'm probably one of the most diverse guys on the department, if you will. And, um, you know, when the mayor took office, I have to tell you, you know, he came up with a slogan that I thought was very ingenious, and it was the slogan of One Mobile. And as I thought about that, it says, you know, it breaks down racial and social barriers uh, that we need. Look at the city of Mobile, how diverse the city of Mobile is. Um, as your chief, uh, I want to tell you that you have my commitment to reduce crime and to improve the quality of life for all Mobilians here. Um, I do want to tell the staff of the Mobile Police Department, none of us get where we want to get in life without someone opening doors, without support, without help, without being mentored. There are people here that's mentored me. And um, if you'll look behind me, we've got several hundred years of experience in law enforcement. And I certainly can't do it on my own without the men and women behind me. I'll also say to the citizens of Mobile, you have my unwavering commitment. And over the next 90 days, you'll find out the professionalism will increase. You'll find out that you're going to see us more, we'll be more visible. And you're going to see a stark difference going forward with this administration. Whatever issues you may have, I have an open door policy and you'll certainly be able to come and talk with me and, and share those visions or those issues or complaints that you may have. I want to say to every member of the department, both men and women, you're going to be challenged, you're going to be pushed, you're going to be asked to do things that you normally haven't been asked to do. But as we go through this process, the, the only thing I want every member of this department to know that this is the best place to work in the country. To my wife, I want to thank her. Uh, we've been together for 33 years. We've been married for 26, and I'd like to tell you it's all been blissful, but uh, those of you that's been married, you know how tough marriage can be, especially for a police officer, but she has stuck it out with me. And to that, uh, I'm indebted to her, obviously, forever. And of course, the last, but certainly not the least, um, I've still got to be voted on. And to the city council, I want to extend to you an invitation to personally speak with me, to talk about my vision, to talk about my plan. And uh, if you'll give me an opportunity to talk with you and share that plan with you, I'm very confident uh, that I would have your support as well. Mayor, thank you. So uh, any questions for, uh, from the media? Okay, come, yeah, come on. <laughs> Any questions? All right. 
It's, you know, it's, it's, it's about leadership. It's about experience. It's about how they view the responsibility uh, of, of making the city a safer city. And it's also about um, um, buying into the vision that we have for the entire city also, and the part that the police department plays in there. I think it's also important uh, for the chief to recognize that that it's not just about policing, it's about community engagement, and that they cannot fix the problems of crime as policemen. They can facilitate that, and they can be a big part of that, but they have got to have that community involvement, the community engagement, and the community and trust. And so when I look at Paul Pryde, I think that he will be able to build that, you know? But when I looked at some of the others, I think they also had that, you know, those attributes to be able to do that. That's why I think that the coming together of this team is going to be so important uh, that they will gel. A conversation that we had earlier this morning is that even though uh, we have one leader now, but we're all leaders and followers, uh, even the mayor. You know, and so I think that uh, that being able to be uh, a follower uh, for the guys that will be supporting them is very important. So, yeah. all right. Well, we're going to continue to build those external and internal partnerships, both through community action groups, commercial action groups, certainly uh, our local partners, uh, both uh, police um, and federal partners as well. You know, unfortunately for us, the pandemic over the last two years has, has really hindered uh, a lot of that process. But as we wane in, in COVID and that virus kind of goes away, we're going to continue building upon uh, the trust and transparency with the community. Uh, I think the mayor alluded to it best. Uh, we can't do it really without the community. And I know that sounds so cliche. They say it all the time in law enforcement. Uh, but at the end of the day, we really can't do it without community involvement. And so as you see the men and women behind you, uh, not only I, but the staff of the police department will be spearheading uh, that involvement and that community engagement. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it.